Hey, welcome everybody, and thank you for staying around at TwitchCon to Sunday and coming to learn something about cybersecurity for streamers and gamers. So uh, I'm hoping they're going to close the door soon. We're told it gets pretty loud, so if, uh, if we're not loud enough for you, let us know. So, um, you know, we, we had a bunch of music and really cool stuff to kick it off uh, like we did last year, but they made me take it out for copyright stuff. Yeah, yeah, copyright, what are you gonna do? So uh, first, first things first, uh, a little house cleaning stuff. So chat, if you have questions, don't wait till the end to pipe them in there. We want you guys to ask questions now so we can queue them up. If you have questions in the room, we have some giveaways. And when you leave, try to leave through the doors that are open. There's not enough of you here to have to try to you know, squeeze out doors that aren't open because we have another giveaway for you as you go out the door, okay? So I want to introduce you to your panelists first. Um, so first we have Archie TV. Uh, I'm giving every panelist a couple of, we couple of minutes uh, to talk a little bit about what they do so you know uh, who they are, you get a little background, and then you'll understand why they're here. So Archie, tell us a little bit about your stream, man. What are you up to? So I stream full-time on Twitch. Is that, can I hear mm -hmm. That's better. <laughs> so I stream full-time on Twitch. I've been doing it for a year and a half now. Um, it's quite hard to get to where you are, like from going part-time to full-time, so it's, uh, it's quite hard. I just wanted to say shout out Future Crew, best crew in the world, best crew in the world. Check them out. Oh, next we have Jesse. This is why you're supposed to sit in order, guys. <laughs> I sat where I was told to sit. Um, hello, my name is Jesse Quo. I am an IT support engineer as my career, and I stream part-time on Twitch. I talk loudly over indie games and retro games about the mental health, um, human condition, and information technology. Thanks, Jesse. Mr. Mackle. Hi, everybody. My name's Steve. Uh, I am a former unit chief with the FBI Cyber Division. Uh, I spent about 10 years investigating nation state sponsored intrusions into critical U.S. national security infrastructure. I currently run a global security operations team for Semantic Cybersecurity Services. He, 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 he's actually a gamer. What kind and of games are you playing right now, Narc? <laughs> 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 uh, thanks for the prompt, Jake. Uh, uh, last year, I, I actually got, I'm a recovering Heroes of the Storm addict. Um, yes. I, I finally broke the addiction last oh, no. Christmas, uh, thankfully. It's been great for my family. I actually get to do other things now. Um, this has been the year of From Software Games, uh, starting with Sekiro and uh, work my way through Dark Souls 3, and I'm now slowly making my way through Bloodborne. Um, uh, this is an important community for me, uh, I, I, not just for me, but I have an 11-year-old son who uh, has been getting into uh, a lot of Fortnite, and we've been playing uh, Remnant from the Ashes uh, co-op. And if I wasn't here today, I would be stuck in front of my computer playing Borderlands 3. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, thanks, buddy. I didn't want everyone to just think you were here because you're a smart yeah. security guy. <laughs> and then finally, Martian. Martian, tell yeah. us a little about what you do. Well, I am... Um like streaming partner, we stream a lot together. Um, we try to raise money for charity for um, kids battling cancer or other diseases. Um, I just won't have the specialized home depot myself. Um, basically, here just to give the cause a reason. Thanks, buddy. And then finally, I, as your moderator, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I work with Steve for Symantec. So if you guys know who Norton is, right, we own them for at least another month. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I've done this panel with Jesse and Steve a couple years in a row, and one of the things we want to do every time we do this panel is show you that um, you know you guys have a reason to be attacked. One of the things that most streamers don't realize is that you have a reason um, that attackers think you're a good target. We also have a diverse group up here, right? UK, Netherlands. I'm not telling them where you live because that's part of your story. <laughs> um, you know, and then a couple, and three people in the industry. So, you know, as Marty said, and this is why he's kind of unique, he's not a streamer, right? He's my stream partner, yet he still had an incident. Yep. So let's take you through why you guys are a very good target. So our buddy Full Throttle, he's part of our team, just won the World of Tanks thing downstairs and got this i7-8700K, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, highest score of the weekend, right? But that's our problem. 
we buy powerful stuff, right? So we fill our systems with a bunch of CPU and GPU power that when we're not using it is a delicious target for attackers because they can't get these devices in their home countries, so they take advantage of your excess and your unused to leverage for attacks. We all want to be like the pros, right? So we're really focused on our gaming, right? If it's not, if the gaming's FPS is good and we're getting a low ping, we're not necessarily paying attention to other things, and that gives attackers a very nice platform to come in and do whatever they want to, because all you care about is, is the game running well and am I doing a good job and am I like, you know, is that ninja who just headshotted me? And yes, I was headshotted by ninja. Um, wasn't my proudest moment. Who's, who's ninja? <laughs> oh, he's that dude that, that abandoned us and went to Mixer, who now thinks it's funny to shit on us. All right. So the other thing is, is we constantly are looking for an edge, right? We're constantly looking for something that gives us an advantage. So what happens is you see these things, a free modded account. We had a couple guys come into our Discord. Like I was just promised I'd get all these Fortnite skins if you guys join this Discord server. I literally hadn't finished typing the message saying, dude, don't join that Discord server. Before he sent a message that went, don't join that Discord server. I'm getting spammed and my computer's been hacked. The other thing is we're trying to build communities. We want our community members to join our stream, to come to us, to want to feel part of our family, to then help us grow for whatever our thing is, whether we're trying to get to full time, whether we're raising money for charity. And you have to be careful because it's a tendency to become a chronic oversharer. And you know, we'll give you some tips about how not to do that, but still create a community. So chronic oversharing will really put you in a position to leave things out there that others will take advantage of. And these, you know, we, we had a Guy Fawkes mask last year. That thing's dead. But these are the things these attackers are looking for. This is why you are lucrative attacks, right? You spend more money on games than you spend on security. Quick, quick raise of hands, chats, one in the chat. How many people have a paid for, paid for computer protection software? Paid for. Yeah, it's a really small percentage because hell, I'd spend the money on a game first, right? So you are a lucrative target. And I'm going to show you who the attackers are and why that equates to you getting owned. So what you're looking at is some, is some information from a research firm. I didn't have, um, I didn't have their name on here because I don't have permission to use it. Um, <laughs> so what they've basically show, showing here is how many people watch live streams. How many people watch esports? And if you overlay on this, how many of these people are also in the same age category of your average attackers? 61% of people who view your streams also fall into the age of attack actors. If you then take the two areas where we have the regions with the most attack actors and overlay that on this, 48% of those people are in the regions with the highest attack activity. So when you look at this, you're, we're essentially saying that the people watching your streams are also the people who do a lot of attacking. So you are one, lucrative, two, drawing attention. So I'd like to turn this over to Steve, uh, given what he does, um, to talk a little bit about some of the threats that we've actually found. And you guys may have run into a few of these. I assume that you guys are here because you're either concerned about this or had something happen. So Steve, I'll, I will start with the, uh, the <clears throat> Twitch one. We don't have panels, so Steve can't see what he's doing. I took a picture, I got it. All right, good man. Um, yeah, so these are by, by no means the uh, full list of the types of attacks uh, folks like us will be susceptible to, but they demonstrate a couple of important con concepts. And to piggyback on what uh, Bob said, Let's talk about why um, you're lucrative. Um, one is um, you have computing power, um, and usually it's pretty good computing power, and if you're streaming or you're playing online games, you also probably have a pretty good bandwidth, um, and cyber criminals will leverage that uh, to uh, conduct additional types of attacks. Uh, one of the things we found recently has been uh, botnets uh, being used to watch streams, so if you want to pump your numbers up, you could hire a botnet, uh, they'll watch your stream for you, you get your numbers up. Um, what's happening there though is other people's computers are being used uh, to put bots on their computers to watch your streams. 
Uh, now, that may seem like an innocuous usage for a botnet, but once you have created such a, a network of machines that have been compromised, uh, criminals will then leverage it for other things, like uh, denial of service attacks. They can leverage it for more wide-scale uh, fraud schemes. Uh, so it's important to keep your machines clean to avoid these um, and not, uh, not encourage the use of these streams, because any time you encourage the, the criminal activity, um, you're basically funding their next round of attacks. Um, they're market-driven, just like businesses. If you give them money, they're not just going to take it and run. They're going to invest it in R&D, uh, in, in, in new enterprising ways of stealing money and resources from other people. Uh, next one, um, fake servers and invitations. Uh, I actually encountered this personally uh, before I kicked my Heroes addiction. Um, before Blizzard added voice chat to Heroes of the Storm, you'd see a lot of people joining uh, a game and the first thing they would kick out is a, uh, is a Discord link. Now, um, in a lot of cases, the Discord links themselves are malicious. Um, they'll exploit browser uh, vulnerabilities and install malicious software on your computer. The ones that don't will actually take you to a legit server, uh, but then while you're in chat, uh, people will throw out links. They'll try and entice you to click on stuff, either free giveaways or uh, pictures or uh, links to their streams if they're they're streaming the game, and those will have uh, vulner those will take you to malicious websites that will compromise your machine. So, um, be careful when engaging in the uh, the social aspects of your online games. Uh, be wary of the types of things people are trying to get you to follow uh, and, and and click on because there's they'll take advantage of the fact that. You're in a game, uh, you don't have a heightened sense of uh, security awareness because you're trying to relax in your time outside of work, uh, and you're more likely to fall for some of these scams. Next one, um, Steam stealing. So I get probably five or six uh, notifications from Steam Guard every week. Uh, somebody's trying to log into my account from Estonia, Texas, um, somewhere, you know, several countries in Asia. Um, and it's basically people trying to break into my account, uh, identify all the items I have that are tradable and worth money, which, spoiler alert, I have none, uh, and, uh, and then take that stuff or either, you know, try and gift games, uh, leverage my payment account details to buy stuff that they can offload uh, into their own accounts. Uh, but um, the malware is out there um, to compromise Steam. If you, you can download, you can, uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. One. Um, you download a, a malicious software that will just, when you log into Steam, it will steal your details. Um, and the other way is um, they will just try and brute force your account. So having Steam Guard or some other two-factor authentication will help. And lastly, um, yeah, malicious use of gaming forums. So um, I don't do this as much anymore, but you know, maybe 10 years ago when I was way more into trying to be good at games. Now I've just accepted I'm old and I'm never going to be good. <laughs> but uh, I would be constantly on gaming forums trying to figure out how to get an edge. You know, how do I, what's the best strategies? How do I do the right, you know, how do I optimize key bindings? Uh, all that kind of stuff. And in those forums, people will try and scam you. They'll, they'll try and uh, give you, uh, get you to download software that will help you achieve those, uh, end, those end goals. They will try and entice you to follow links because there's free giveaways. A lot of times those free giveaways will ask for personal information or just straight download malicious code. So whenever uh, you're in a forum and you see something that's too good to be true, um, you should, your spidey sense should go off. You know, don't click on it, or at least think twice before clicking on it uh, because th these things are still out there. All right, and some examples. Uh, here's some examples that, man. I got to learn to use a mic better. Mm -hmm. uh, some examples of these attacks that are actually existing in Hearthstone today. Um, one is um, the hearth crawler. So I don't know why you would want to download software to play a game for you. Uh, the whole point is to have fun. But there are folks that want to mine gold and play a lot of Hearthstone games without having to beat their computer. So you'll download something like hearth crawler, which will play games for you, which will get you, uh, you know, gold that you can then use to buy uh, new card packs or buy into uh, different game modes. And surprise, surprise, some of these actually do what they tell you they're going to do. A lot of them, though, uh, will just straight up steal, your, steal stuff off your computer. It'll install a botnet node. Um, it can install key loggers to mine credentials or to mine your uh, uh, banking information. Next one, um, 
deck tracker. So um, I never got into Hearthstone because I realized really early on that I was just really bad at strategy games. Um, I should learn. They all sound fun, but I'm terrible. So I wanted to figure out, you know, have somebody do the strategy part for me. Uh, so, you know, download a deck tracker, something that would help me um, manage uh, card, card decks and optimize them based on what I've got. Um, many of them are actually infected with Trojans. So um, you download the, this is one where it's a, it's a true Trojan horse where it will download uh, something that it actually does the deck tracking, but it's been implanted with malicious code. Um, if you download the version from the, the site of the developer, it's actually not malicious. Uh, but people will send links to uh, like Google Drive, box accounts, uh, random file sharing area sites um, where you will download an infected version. And a lot of people are getting their uh, Hearthstone uh, accounts taken over. Last one is uh, it's a combo attack. Um, this is uh, one targeting both people that play Hearthstone and have Bitcoin wallets. So what this one will do is once it gets on your machine, um, it's supposed to be used to mine gold and dust, which can help you, uh, you know, you can use for in-game currency. What it's actually doing is looking for your Bitcoin wallet information in the clipboard. So I don't know if, you, if you know how Windows works, every time you do a copy and paste, it puts that information in the clipboard. You can't see it, but it's sticking around in memory. Well, this malware will actually steal, look for what looks like Bitcoin wallet information in the clipboard, steal it, and then it will clean out your Bitcoin wallet. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, there's ways to get around this, but if you're into both of, if, yeah, if you're into Bitcoin and Hearthstone, you could be susceptible to this type of attack. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So this is just one game where we had a lot of data really rapidly available, so we wanted to share that. So let's get to the stuff that really helps you, right? So now you realize you've got stuff worth stealing. You've got people who are willing to steal it. And what are you going to do to protect yourself? And we're going to have the panelists kind of go through some of these slides. So we're going to start with Marty. Um, Marty, they each have a personal story to share as well that'll help you see how this stuff actually, uh, you know, works in real life. So all you, buddy. So what I'm first going to talk about is um, your security as well. What you need what you need should get for your computer. Um, the first thing I want to start off with is your quality. Uh, you need to get something you can trust that is worth it. Uh, there's some programs around there that's a bit of fake. You don't really know them. You hope they would be good. It's better to take something you can really trust that has some good quality in it. Um, so next to that, um, it's also the free programs. Um, that's the harder part. Free programs, whenever there's a virus active or people hacking, trying to hack you, um, they can only develop something when it's already been out there and people know it. If you get a paid for program, you have an entire team of people working for you to prevent your computer getting infected instead of trying to cure it afterwards. Um, so that's, I think, the most important thing is about protecting your computer. Um, and it's your software as well. Just don't download everything you can find on the internet. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> well, there's some, yeah. Um, but try to be a bit careful with what you download, where you get it from. There's also um, from Norden, which, uh, which sponsored at this moment. Uh, we can also, they have some good programs. They can also. Not, not sponsored by Norton. <laughs> <laughs> um, but where, uh, yeah, they can also scan the websites you have. So you just. So you should get a heads up if it's worth trying to go to there, or if it's probably a good idea just to stay away from it. There's actually different kinds of stuff that can give you that notification. So you have that little bit of extra protection. So you have a story to go with this one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so my thing, when I was about 14, 15 years old, um, yeah, I thought to free is good enough, right? My parents didn't want to pay for it. Well, I was 14. I never wanted to pay for it, of course. <laughs> so I got something free and, um, just somewhere. I found it. Some people in my class told it, oh, it should be fine. So I went with that. Um, so I basically had no protection at all. Um, I was really into playing um, RunScape back in the days. Um, it was always quite fun for me. Um, at that moment, um, you do come into some difficulties. I had only one email um, I used for everything I use, 
my own email, every game I found, like big games, small games, whatever, always the same password. And that's when it gets a bit fishy because when something gets compromised and they can get behind the information of everything attached to that um, email address. <laughs> and that's why I, you should really try to get different emails for the stuff you use, different passwords as well. So it's when something does get compromised, it's just one thing you will lose and not just everything that you are using. Yeah, because you lost your whole RuneScape account, right? Yes. Yeah, that sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does suck, man. That's your money and your time investment, right? So, uh, Archie, uh, tell us a little bit about two-factor Roth, and then tell us your insane story, please. Right, so this one's a no-brainer, the use of uh, two-factor. So I can give you a story now if you want, right? Yeah, yeah, roll. So two-factor is free. You don't need to pay. It takes less than a minute to set up. All you need to do is uh, scan the QR code or you can just enter the code manually. So anyways, this is the story. It's quite embarrassing, okay? I don't play the game anymore, okay? I'm, I'm 26 years old, right? Um, it's called RuneScape. <laughs> All right, listen. So basically, I used to play RuneScape uh, when I was around 12, and I played it for like six years, right? I used to skip every single sport event just to play RuneScape. Um, and then I get hacked. I don't have uh, two step. And uh, yeah, I lost everything. It was worth six years of my life, all gone. <laughs> so you, you want to get two step factor for ev everything you have. So basically, so I'm a full time streamer. So if somebody hacks into my account, they can see my purse, they can see where I live, they can see like how I get paid and so on like that. So it's very important. Two-step factor. Download it now. <laughs> Is this one now? Yeah, that's a good story too. Right. So there's another story here. So remember to turn off your mics, cameras, when you're doing sensitive stuff. That could be anything, right? So if you're like on your computer chilling, you know, and then you decide to watch, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you yeah. You want you want you want to turn off your camera, right? Because you never know what you. Someone's watching, you know, whatever you're doing, okay? Checking your bank account. <laughs> so this is a good one. For example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, checking your, so you're just gonna go like, with the credit card, yeah, this is my credit card. Right? <laughs> All right, so anyways, this is a story. So I was streaming one day, and I finished. I went to get some food, I went to the kitchen, whatever. And then I came back, sat down, my camera was on, you know, like the, I don't know if you guys use the HD 920. Who, who uses that camera? Yeah. yeah, and then under it is like a blue light yeah. when it comes on, right? So I finished my stream. I'm just like, you know, sitting, chilling, watching some YouTube, you know, munching on some crips. And then I see there's a blue light. I'm like, oh, it, sh it should be OBS. So I look at my streaming PC. OBS is not there. So I'm like, okay, never mind. It has to be the app. I see the app. App is not there either. I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. So I kind of start freaking out. So I literally just unplug everything, just like turn off the PC and everything like that. And then next morning I call the ISP and they're like, yeah, you've been, there's a few attacks on your PC. And I was like, who would want to attack me? Are you watching me? Like, you just want to watch me eat or something like that? I don't, I don't understand, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So yeah, so even like, I just turn off my That's camera. That's not what they're hoping to watch, Archie. <laughs> no, they want to they wanna watch me play RuneScape, that's, that's what it is. How's this, how does this guy get some gold, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, anyways, but yeah, so every time I stop streaming, I literally turn off my camera, like, I just, just unplug it, and it's quite easy, just unplug it, say, or put something over it, and then your microphone, obviously, switch it off, you know. Like I said, whatever you do at your house, just, yeah. that's it. Thanks, buddy. Jesse. So um, I recommend using a P.O. box, a postal office box, for your stream and for your personal things. Um, the reason for this is, is when I first started setting up my business, my LLC, 
I uh, put it to one of my old apartment addresses because it wouldn't use the type of PO box that I was set up with, like, you know, $20 a month or something less like that. You can go specifically to UPS, FedEx, or um, other uh, places, and they'll give you, like, a physical address, which can be used for business purposes like this. <laughs> so it was, like, one of my old apartment houses or whatever that I lived at, like, you know, 10 years ago. That was, like, my address. And someone apparently sent me something to my P.O. box, and it got returned because they never told me to go, like, hey, I sent you something. Like, it, usually when you send someone something, you should, like, let them know, like, to be on the lookout for it. So this person looked up my LLC, found out, like, where I used to live, and, like, sent me that whole address and was like, can I send it here? Will you get it there? And it freaked me out because, like, yeah. you shouldn't be doing that. Um, so that's something that, like, I'm very adamant about. Um, have one for your, like, personal stuff. Um, that's, like, an extra step that you can do um, because I do have um, various friends throughout the streaming and YouTube space over the last decade who have said, yeah, I went to my streaming P.O. box and one of my viewers were, was waiting there for me because, you know, you put it on your Twitch page, you tweet it out, you, you make a YouTube video and, like, oh, send it to, you know, Kansas City, blah, 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 P.O. box, not. Or what, and if you say, like, mail Mondays, I pick it up on Sundays every day, or, you know, Monday morning, Saturday morning, whatever, they're going to be there. It's just, like, a matter of time for that. So that's another, like, cybersecurity thing, which then bleeds out into the real world. So um, go with other people and uh, make sure that you have, like, that kind of separation. I've also had businesses who refuse to work with me because I gave them a P.O. box. Oh, we can't ship there. Um, any business that can't ship to a P.O. box isn't a business that you want to work with because if you can't be mailing through the U.S. Postal Office, I do not want any package that you are sending to me whatsoever. Um, and I've had friends, like I said, I've been in this space for a decade, where, oh, you know, I trust this brand. It's a huge hardware company or it's a charity. Like, I trust it. Um, and they only gave their address out to like, you know, two, three companies, and then eventually it gets leaked in a, a data breach that occurs with, um, for instance, E3 happened earlier this year. I, have, I had a lot of friends that were on that list, journalists, YouTubers, Twitch people, and I, I went through that list. I saw like, you know, all a thousand things, and I, I DM'd my friends, and I'm like, hey, I just wanna let you know, like, your address is out there. And they were thankful for that, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it can happen to anyone, and even if you try to be as careful as possible and, uh, oh, I set up my LLC like a decade ago, or, you know, it's a charity, I can trust them, right? You never know what their security levels are at, and you never know if or when they're going to get attacked, or, you know, some irate employee decides to release the list on Pastebin, or they sell it because they need the money for their, their life-threatening situations. Um, so that's, that's my story about like how basic cybersecurity stuff bleeds out into the real world way too easily. That's yours too. Oh, fantastic, yeah, I'm great. <laughs> um, so use separate credit cards for everything. So if you, even if this is just a hobby, you just do this for fun, you only make like $1,000 in tips every five years or something of that nature, you wanna have these things separate because you come to TwitchCon, you have a credit card. If this one is attached to everything about like who you are and you lose that, how are you going to uh, take care of yourself for the rest of the weekend? Um, so you want like also small credit limits because if it gets, you attach it to different services, different games. Oh, let me buy like, you know, a $5 loot box or, oh, there's this new service that uh, does tips for one of my favorite streamers that's in another country. Let me attach my credit card to that so I could give them a few dollars. And then five years down the lane, uh, your credit card might not be expired and maybe it's really close and they decide to attack you like the month before it expires. That has happened to friends of mine. So it, they're hoping that you like don't notice at the very last second. Um, and if it's a small limit, if someone does get access to it, um, it's a small enough limit so when they try to like buy a brand new Alienware computer for $2,000, they can't because the limit is too small, the bank, account, uh, the bank gets a notification and um, you are protected a little bit more. The more layers and more obstacles you can put between you and any attackers, like I'm not perfect, I, I love doing this stuff, but I don't do it sometimes out of 
um, not, not necessarily laziness, but like just ease of access for myself and, and others. Um, but I do have a lot of bunch of different uh, obstacles in the way where they'll look at me, they'll try to do something, it, they get blocked, and they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna go down on the next person on the list. And unfortunately, that might be someone like you in the audiences. Um, also, there's a crediting monitoring service. So there's free ones out there. I'm sure you've heard of them. Um, I'm also currently using LifeLock. <laughs> And uh, they let me know about data breaches like a month before they become public because they are researchers who are in the know of that whole cybersecurity space. So they, they'll tell me, hey, your main email account and your bank account uh, was just found on the dark web. So make sure that you're monitoring your stuff and you have an idea if you see any like weird charges coming in or weird emails coming in, that's why. And uh, for instance, I got one like a month ago and just recently this week DoorDash um, announced that they had a huge breach of people's addresses, uh, credit cards, full names, like all of these things. I used DoorDash like once 12 years ago, but they have all that information on me and, because they were compromised and their data wasn't protected as much and they didn't cleanse it when they were supposed to. So that's my information. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Stevie. Uh, how many, oh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is a group that posts a lot to social media. Um, and you, you want to tell, you know, everyone, uh, your followers, your friends, your family, what you're doing, you're excited about it. Um, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is do that after the event happens. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen stories uh, or met with the victims of where they posted to social media, like usually Facebook. I'm old, so still use Facebook. Um, that, oh, I'm going on vacation. We'll be in Hawaii for the next two weeks. And they come home two weeks later, and their house has been cleaned out. Because they've also posted recently whether they bought a new house or moved to a new apartment. So their address is out there. Um, you're basically just advertising to criminals that you're not going to uh, be home for a while. Um, I, I call it the, uh, the home alone principle. Um, if you've seen the movie Home Alone, um, the, the, the bad guys attacked during Christmas in a rich neighborhood because they correctly deduced that uh, all these wealthy people were going to be leaving town for Christmas going on vacation and they could, they could just wipe those houses clean. Uh, unfortunately, they ran into uh, Macaulay Culkin and things mm. didn't go well, but that same principle is used in the real world. Um, people will mine social media for information that they can use in targeting your houses. Um, you can use social media for your benefits. Uh, in, in my neighborhood, we have a lot of folks that are pretty vigilant and will almost to the point of being annoying, will constantly <laughs> post on our neighborhood Facebook page, you know, whose car is this? It's been hanging out in the neighborhood for a week or two. Or, um, any, you know, there's a guy coming around selling, he seems sketchy, you know, be aware. Uh, so you can use uh, social media for your benefit, but uh, be careful what you put out there. Uh, and make sure you're, you really have a good understanding of who is able to view it um, because um, uh, anybody uh, looking at the information you're posting on, on social media could potentially have uh, bad intentions toward you. Yeah, I actually got a call at work when I was leading the incident response team that from a woman who was a streamer who had posted she was going to Starbucks. And a person who was infatuated with her showed up at Starbucks and was waiting for her. And although nothing happened, there was no altercation, she was freaked out. And because she knew I streamed, she called and said, I had an incident, can you help me? I'm like, that's not what incident response does. <laughs> um, but you definitely should call a police department and let them know what's going on. Uh, and that's one of the other things. So if you're telling people, hey guys, I'm going to check this out, you don't know who your fans are. So just really be careful about the other side of that, right? But that kind of leads into the next thing, Steve. Mm -hmm. Uh, last year we talked a lot about swatting, uh, and while swatting hasn't been in the news as much this year, uh, it's still a problem. And as streamers, there is one thing you can do that could help protect you, and that is go down and talk to your local law enforcement. Um, you know, I, I live pretty close, I live in a kind of rural area, so I'm really close to uh, our police station. They're actually very friendly. Um, I've, I've talked to a bunch of folks who stream who have had good luck talking to their local law enforcement. 
they don't want to come in and break down your door if you're not actually barricaded in your house and are about to commit a violent crime. Um, you know, after working in law enforcement for 10 years, one thing I learned is that, you know, cops don't want to get involved in those situations. They would much rather be armed with knowledge um, and approach situations with the right level of, uh, of response. So um, it's an opportunity to go and meet with your local police, educate them about what streamers are, what you do, um, what swatting is, and how, you know, some mechanisms they can use to avoid that. Um, I know, I think, Bob, you've, you've had some experience in this area as well. Um, it can help avoid what could be a tragic, uh, uh, a tragic engagement with law enforcement, and uh, no one wants to be involved in that. Yeah. In fact, you'd be, like, I live in a really tiny town on the moon, and, um, <laughs> see, I'm not telling you where I live. Um, and, like, when I went in and told him, he said, oh, yeah, we've actually got a few people in town. Let me add you to our list. So this is a tiny, tiny town that already knew what it was. But if you happen to be the first one, they want to learn. They want to know. And then they'll, they'll be there to make sure that you get taken care of. Plus, you can get really special treatment sometimes. So the last one is lie. It is OK to lie. All right, there's a lot of people who like to do a birthday stream. Well, thank you for giving me your birthday. One of the things that I find really amazing that you'll find all over like Instagram and you'll find it all over Snapchats now is, uh, which one are you? Are you, you know, what, what type of SpongeBob character are you? If your birthday is September, you're Patrick. If your birthday is October, you're SpongeBob. You know, what year were you born? Then you're actually a this or a that. And people, po they respond back to these posts. Those aren't being done for fun. They're farming you, right? So lie. You're on stream, create a stream birthday. Your stream birthday should be some random day. It's okay, it's your stream birthday. I've had people come on my stream, I know you have, I've seen it, I've been there, right? Your stream's just got some crazy people on it, so you should lie <laughs> all the time. But, you know, it's okay to just, you know, make up a day. April 4th is my birthday, right? Everybody come and celebrate my birthday stream with me. Um, you know, where do you live? He lives in Mount Olympus, right? <laughs> I, I live on the moon. It's, it's, you've got to not feel like you're hurting. This goes back to chronic oversharing. You're not hurting your community. You should be educating them. Like, I, I actually did have a viewer who want, was probing and poking around, and finally at one point after watching for a while, months went by, he said, hey, is it wrong if one of your viewers really likes you and likes the mission you're on to help you grow? And I went, well, I don't know. Um, how do you want to help me grow? He's like, well, what if you all of a sudden had a thousand viewers? And I went, bro, you know what I do for a living. Like, that's probably not the thing you want to offer me. And he disappeared, never showed up in my chat again. So, you know, it's okay. Lie, treat everyone in your chat as a criminal. You have not met them face to face. You do not know them. You think you do, but you, you don't know. I mean, it took a long time before we knew each other, well, except for Steve, that we, became close enough to know each other that we felt comfortable sharing things, but it's okay, you, you don't have to feel bad, right? So I'm plugging, right? Lord Light, raising money for kids battling cancer. One of the things we're gonna ask, which hopefully chat's queuing up some questions, we're gonna encourage you to ask questions. So my son had a two year battle with cancer, he's one, and he picked these bags, so thanks, thank you. So he picked these bags, yellow is for childhood cancer, and we embroidered them with our logo. So every good question that gets asked at these mics, you're gonna get a bag, right? Uh, the I love you is every time I kill somebody in the games we play, I open mic and go, I love you. <laughs> it's it's really you. annoying. <laughs> it's really, really annoying. Well, if you stop dying to me, you wouldn't. <laughs> <know. laughs> I'm, I'm not dying to him. Weird. Every, every time we host him or something, like he would die, and then he would be like, guys, guys, come, come and check out the stream. We, we, we help people with, uh, with cancer and, you know, come. It's good, it's good to advertise based on mm -hmm. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, come on up. Uh, we're going to answer them right till the end. Um, we're going to just come right up to a mic. There's come right up to a mic. Over. Mic's right behind you. Everybody just line up. We're going to get them all. And if we don't get you in here, we're going to throw you out. And we're actually going to stay outside to answer questions. So let's take one here, right, right here. This isn't a question, but a tale of my own. Um, I actually had an experience. And what it is is, you know Skype, right? Well, yep. you know how it's terribly insecure. Right. Well, this was back in the day when I was like, ooh, I probably about 14, 15, 16, 
Brother Young. Uh, what happened was I was a uh, staff for a Minecraft server, and what happened, someone got angry, decided I'm going to use Skype to look up every single staff's IP. Yep. Uh, yep, yep. They it, and that still happens to this day. Somehow Don't managed Skype. to get my VPN, but not knowing they threatened me, and not me not knowing and being scared, I kind of cracked and gave the other staffs staff Skype usernames. Yeah, that sucks, man. Was that recent? So, no, quite right. a while back. Heck, that server isn't even up anymore. Well, see, this is the real stories, right? Yeah. And we thank you for sharing that, man. That's a crappy thing that happens. Come get a bag. We'll make you feel better. Yes. OK, so this is going back to what Jesse said. What do you do when your personal information can't be kept private? Like, I don't personally stream. My brother and sister do. But I work for a municipal level government agency, and there's a newspaper at the other end of the state where I work yeah. that takes a great interest in our transparency and stuff and is able to do yeah, the so you're a civil servant. state level equivalent yep. of an FOIA. So every single year, my name, my job title, my work location, and my salary gets yep. published in a newspaper somewhere. Oh, yeah. So there's so. not much you can do about that because that's government regulation, yeah. obviously. Other than just keep um, everything Educate your separate. siblings about making sure that their names and your names don't show up. So if you're playing like Heroes of the Storm together, when yeah. your real ID friends together, you see your full name. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So just being as aware as possible with each other that you're not sharing those things when you're talking on stream or just like, oh yeah, my sister, instead of saying your real name, Jesse or something, you say, my sister, Caramel yeah. or whatever, whatever name you use on the internet, and trying to be very clear about separating those personas. Um, don't be in pictures with them when they post them on their streaming Twitter. If they put it on their personal, like locked down, privatized family Facebook, sure. Um, those are things that I would do because I, I'm a streamer, but my siblings aren't, and my siblings are younger than me, and they are very adamant about, like, we don't really use social media. and But they play games with me, and they're, like, in my Discord, so we try our best to separate um, not using their real names, not using their real pictures. Yeah, that's just my, my bro and my sis, whatever. Yeah. Sort of thing. So, something else. <clears throat> We are not sponsored by the company Steve and I work for, but there's a lot of people in my company that play games. We have lots of gamers. So because your stuff is out there, one of the things I got the company to do, it also happens to help that your buddy's the CEO, <laughs> is if you go to lifelock.com, I use that And you too. use code TwitchCon, they will give you the top of the line LifeLock, which I don't even know how much that crap costs anymore. It's like $100 for free. It's like a thousand All right. a year. So everybody should write that down, take a picture. If you're in chat, go there now. It's only good for a week and for the first thousand people, and there's only like, I don't know, 30, 40 of you here, especially for someone like you where your stuff is out there, yeah. you have to take a minute. Don't just sign up like, yeah, hey, I got LifeLock. You have to actually go into LifeLock. You have to enter some information. We have the best security to protect your data. But then every single time anything happens, you'll get a notice right on your phone going, hey, yep. come and look at this. Does this look right to you? And if not, there are human beings who are going to get on the phone with you and protect you. Yep. So it's free. It's yeah, like 1200 bucks. I've gotten like, to the point where I've even tied my Gmail address to mm -hmm. a um, phone number that's on a like, track phone burner phone. So. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, because my brother's a cybersecurity person. Oh, there you go. So cool. Yeah, he helps a lot. Cool. Yeah. Come get it back. It's like we're, we're turning everyone into undercover cops or something. You're doing all the same <laughs> stuff that you have to do to, to you know, undercover. All right, we're gonna, is there a chat? Is there any questions in chat? Thank you. Uh, yes, we have Belast one that <laughs> asks a, hey, Dad. a question for Steve. What steps are law, law enforcement or FBI taking to counter measure swatting? Uh, um, swatting came about after I left, so I, you know, I only know from what I read about on the news, just like everybody else. Um, but it's really, I think, happening at a at a state and local level, um, getting people educated. The bureau's method uh, dealing with a lot of these, you know, 
Swatting is a crime that happens at the local level, but it uses infrastructure that crosses state lines. And it's a level of volume that uh, the federal government isn't going to be able to, to sort of maintain um, adequate staffing for. So what they, their approach, and they do this with a lot of different um, crimes, is they, their method is to educate the state and locals about uh, what the crimes are, uh, who the victims are, uh, what the damage can be or the impact, and then educating them about how they can, they can uh, take on these cases by themselves. So they've gotten really good about, at that in uh, cybercrime specifically, um, as it's gotten, you know, when I started working for them back in the mid to, or, you know, the around 2005 timeframe, cyber was not an issue. I mean, it was, it was pranksters and activists um, just sort of, you know, trying to make a name for themselves, and it's turned into a multi-billion dollar international business. So they've had, we've had to cope with it uh, as a government, that the government has. And where they can make an impact at the federal level, they do. Um, and then where they can't, uh, they will uh, organize programs like InfraGuard uh, to share information with the private industry and with state and local law enforcement to arm them with the tools and knowledge they need to, to take these, to, to investigate these crimes on their own. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Let's go to this side of the room. Hi. Uh, so I'm a streamer. I've been streaming for like 11 months or a year now. Um, and one of the mistakes, I made a couple of the mistakes that you mentioned already. Uh, my birthday, um, when I turned 18, it was kind of hard to hide that. Um, so I made that mistake. It's already out there. There's still evidence, and I'm sure it would be really hard to delete all of that. Also, I've gotten more comfortable with sharing like the area, uh, like what part of the state, what part of the state, uh, like gotten more and more comfortable with that. So. Is there a way to backtrack? And just, I guess, do you have any advice for the way forward? And give them that more, is a fabulous give question. Give them more information, just change it up. Like six months later, like it's my birthday stream again. And they're like, what? And it's like, it's my birthday every day. What, what do you mean? Like, we celebrate <laughs> me every day. Uh, or you could be like, yeah, I just moved. I live in LA now or, you know, on the moon. And you can like rebrand <laughs> your stream with like a green screen and like do crazy cool stuff and like highlight that, put that on your social so people like, get like this weird information and then when they come in and ask like you don't live on the moon you're like yeah i live in kansas city but like you don't who cares like you just just being so. being really like facetious and lying and like if anyone says like you're you're not honest like i'm a i'm a i'm a character i'm a persona like of course i'm a human being but it's like i'm jesse quill right now this is different than who i am at home like with my family I mean, like, normally, like, with a random person from an event, I would do that, but at least with my community, we're all really close, so... Yeah, so, I mean, if these are people that, like, you've been playing with for 10 years, and, like, they're gamers, these are people that you trust, like, that's a lot different than, like, some random person who's never said anything before is, like, what's your address, and you just give it to them, like, what city do you live in? You don't answer that. So if it's a new name that's coming in, and they're like, where are you? And you're like, man, I'm in the coolest studio right now on Mars, and, you know, just, like... Do something hype and silly with it. Um, but like obviously if it's your, your friend like Steve that you've known for like a hundred years, it, like it's gonna be really hard. Ask him why he's telling asking you that on stream. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah thanks, yeah. bro. Why are you asking that on stream? Yeah, right? different that levels too. of comfort. Uh, don't be afraid to lie and going for Delete forward. your VODs yeah. for anything that you've given out personal information that you shouldn't have. Just That's go back, really cr crush a VOD. If you have done that to all of them, crush them all. Yeah. It's okay. You're not making money on your VODs. Oh, that's yeah. A good point. Right? You're yeah. not making money on your VODs. Crush them if you're concerned, right? Yep. And then, I am. And then I, I love your idea of have a birthday every three months for the next year, <laughs> right? Yeah. And obfuscation is not a bad thing, okay? The because way. you may know these people now. Don't, don't do every three months. That's kind of sell out. <laughs> well, you don't have to ask do it for every money. <laughs> Always look at, see, partners, it's always about no, the buck. No, you, you can do it every month. You're not asking for money. You don't have to put a tip goal up. Just, like, blow up a bunch of balloons and be like, yeah, we're partying because it's Saturday night. It's my birthday. The and then do it again and again. Yeah. The alternative is don't say it. another word. In. And then pick a date, just one date, and say, this will be my stream birthday. And nine months from now, blow it out, right? And if they're, hey, wasn't that your birthday? Say, nah, I was just messing around. It's my stream birthdays. That's the thing. 
and that's it. You just yeah, let it go. Yeah, the first day right? that you started streaming, that's what a lot of people do. Like, oh, it's my stream versary. I like that. I like so, that. Yeah. like for you, you just said mm -hmm. 11 months. So a month from now, you can do it again, and that can help uh, obscure what you what you've done in your past. And, and don't panic. Yeah, it's fine. You'll be okay. Yeah. Right. Thank all you right, guys so much. Appreciate all the advice. Back to the side of the room. Side okay. Of the room. <clears throat> so I've been a streamer for a couple of years now, and I'm probably not as careful as I should be, but I try to be. I use two th two-factor authentication as much as humanly possible, but I've noticed that, like for with my Twitch account, there was a day that I got like 18, 19 messages saying that someone was trying to log into my Twitch account. If I have that two-factor in place, is, is that something that I should be further concerned about? Should I work on... Uh, so you probably want to reset that password. It's been shown up in like a data breach somewhere and someone's just taking your name, your Twitter, and they're just like trying to apply it everywhere. And yeah. your two factor is the reason they didn't get in. Right. Yeah, it's a technique they call credential stuffing. So when you, whenever there's a credential leak uh, that goes out in the wild, uh, criminals will basically, as Jesse said, try and use that user ID and password on every account they can find. And so two factor did prevent it, but I would check, I, when this happens to me, which is quite frequently, usually uh, seems to be lately with Steam. Uh, I don't want to point the single them out, it just seems to be they're the, where it's concentrated today. Um, I immediately go in and check my logins. So I want to see if any of them are successful. I go change the password. Um, I use a password manager that generates very long random passwords, so it's pretty easy to update, store the new password in my vault, and then, then move on. Um, so. Yeah, it can get it back. Bag? Can we chat? Anything? Yes, we have Grid that is asking for, uh, let's say, software suggestions other than Norton, McAfee, and Windows Defender in order to protect yourself, right? Other software, 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 software other than Norton? We'll say that again. Other oh, paid God. software other than Norton. Any full size brand name, like if it's a brand name, right? McAfee, Norton. Um, that's about where I'll end. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't want to disparage other companies, but you can remember a couple of things. One, most lists, hey, the list of the top 10 antivirus, um, some of them get paid for. Like, hey, give us 20 grand, we'll give you number one spot, right? Um, I can speak from experience, not because I work at the company, but I've used Norton for a long time. It sucked. If you go back six years plus, Norton was a hog, yeah. right? It ate all your CPU, it slowed crap down, it threw messages in the middle of a freaking game, you end up TF2 championship match and I'm getting whacked because Norton just took mouse control, right? I'm like, the hell are you doing, right? Hey, um, it was, it was but awesome back in But we had a new leader. <laughs> we had a new leader come in about six years ago who said, this, this can't happen. And he wasn't even thinking gaming. He was just like, this product can't do this. We're the number one in the world. We cannot, this crap can't happen. And they threw the whole program out and started from scratch. So the reason that we're going to give everybody here a free copy of Norton, and if you come to my Discord or you come to my chat, I'm going to give you a free copy of Norton as well. So yeah, on your way out, you go through those doors. I'm going to hand you a card good for 20 machines, right? So you can share it with your family and everybody else, right? Gives you a whole first year, totally free. Use this LifeLock code, use it free. Um, but the reason a paid-for company can, can defend you is one, they have a team of people building the stuff that stops the bad guys, right? If you get it for free, then how do you afford to pay for the people who do the research to find what the bad guys are doing and then stop it. You don't. You hope to make your money somewhere else and the free version you give away is either filled with malware because it has an ad section and the entire ad network is compromised. Um, but that's why I, I can speak from experience. I think Jesse, you use Norton still, yeah, right? Absolutely. Martian does. I was on Archie's stream after giving him Norton and he got attacked and Norton popped up because it didn't have it in silent mode, my fault, I didn't tell him how. And it was like, you just got attacked. I stopped it and went away. He didn't even know, he just kept going. I screenshotted it. I'm like, dude. He's, <laughs> Look what he's like, what? He's like, I don't, I, I didn't see it. I'm like, right, that's the point. So, yeah. you know, there are, there are good things out there, but I, I can't disparage, um, I don't want to disparage anybody. Do, do your homework, 
Just don't go free, yeah. okay? On, on top of that, outside of endpoint protection, uh, look into password managers like uh, LastPass and 1Password, uh, free authenticators like Google Authenticator and Semantic VIP. And um, if you're get, when it comes time to upgrade your Wi-Fi router, look for one with built-in security. Um, there are several on the market that have built-in security functions, like a, a firewall and intrusion, uh, intrusion detection system. Um, those add extra layer of security at your network perimeter that can prevent an attack before it hits your computer. Yeah, thanks, dude. I need to get a new so Wi-Fi. This router. side of the room. Hi. Right. So, real quick. <laughs> question and a half. Uh, with what you were just saying about Norton and then LifeLock, would it be better to double up or just? Well, that's the actual services. cool thing. If you take one of our codes, you could actually give it to a friend because if you do this thing there, which I literally just got an email from a friend saying, give this away, you actually get Norton plus LifeLock and you oh. get the ultimate package. You can pick any one of the packages, but you're incredibly, I don't know why you wouldn't pick the best one if we're giving it away for free, right? So you'll get both. But yeah, you keep in mind, Norton's about protecting your technology, LifeLock's about protecting your identity. Okay. Right? So my other question was, how, if I were to get a P.O. box, which I've been thinking about for a while, how would I go about doing one without having to leave town, do as it's difficult to travel? If you, re if you really can't do it, that's fine. You get a P.O. box in town. A lot of post offices now, like Jesse was mentioning earlier, will also let you use their physical address for mm -hmm. shipments. So like I have a P.O. box, it's a, m many towns away from me, um, but if I actually, like, one of my viewers wanted to send me a box uh, and it, it was too big for the P.O. box, most P.O. boxes will take it anyway. Uh, um, Antlion wanted to sponsor me, like I get 10 average viewers. They, they said, no man, you know, your good cause is gonna do it in town. And don't forget the step about telling the police department what you're doing. Okay, that was actually my plan a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah, bring those Thank together, you. okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Back. Back to that side of the room. Hey, um, so to pile on to the question before, um, you guys have really been hammering down the, the paid stuff, and that makes sense with the, the dedicated teams. Um, but Windows Defender comes built into all the current versions of Windows, and it's not an additional fee. Why is, why in your opinion, is Defender not enough? Um, and then I had a second question involving I don't think I can um, answer that. Should, extensions. Should I, should I have the unpopular? I think I can let Jesse answer that. Yeah. Oh. If Jesse wants to. Can we talk after? Yeah, yeah let's talk after. Let's yeah, talk no, after. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, and then my, my main question was actually about um, extensions. They did a whole day on dev uh, here and extensions, and I know they do code review. Um, and you have to show your source code. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, uh, what kind of steps can you take to prevent uh, f installing and, and running malicious extensions on your channel? Uh, You're talking you Twitch extensions, right? <clears throat> yeah, Twitch extensions. Yeah, that guy right there is in app security for Twitch, <laughs> and they do code reviews. Right. So keep in mind, when you install an, an extension for Twitch, it's partly on the back end, partly in your browser. Mm -hmm. And I know this is going to sound so shilly, but Norton does browser protection, right? right. That's well, why the, we, we give this stuff away like crazy. So the, you can't. The extensions also have uh, a portion where they hit the extension creator's back end. That's true. For things mm -hmm. too. Um, yes. And uh, I'm not sure. It becomes a trust. At some point, it's a trust thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't mm -hmm. install an extension if I don't see who the publisher is and I don't feel that publisher is somebody that I feel good about. But to be honest, I feel good be with what Twitch is doing from a security perspective. I think they've stepped it up in the last 12 months quite a bit. So I feel a lot less uh, concerned about yeah. popping extensions on, right? Yeah. Um, I but. If your computer's protected right from your side, you're okay. If you're using, like, like Jesse said, if your personal information for any reason is going through an extension, first of all, you should question that extension, but you should also be obfuscating your personal information, right? P.O. boxes, you know, I use my, I use my screen name on my P.O. box. Mm -hmm. You want to send something to me? It's Lord Blight. Yeah, me too. You know, it's not my name. Yeah. So, with, the, with, between the defense in depth just later. Yeah, man, things. you gotta, you gotta, no one looks out for you but you when it comes to this stuff. That's just the way it is. I'll give it more practical. My general rules when downloading anything that's an add-on, browser, Twitch, uh, World of Warcraft, I used to play, is get it from a trusted source. Mm -hmm. 
if the, the trusted source does any kind of code review or review of extensions, like the, the Apple Store does this, um, I think the Chrome Store does some level of review, and, and Twitch is doing that. That's a good, you know, reviewing that code provides you some level of security. It's not just the developer saying our stuff's good. The third thing is, and I, I hate to be a sheep, but get the thing that most people are using and read those user reviews because if they've got tens of thousands of users and no one has raised a complaint, chances are uh, it's on the up and up. Um, when you get that level of, uh, that volume of uh, user base, uh, people will find and point out security flaws very, very quickly, uh, and you will see it in, in forums, in the news, on, on, our, on, on whatever your, your social media feeds are. So, um, you know, that's why people tend to stick with the popular ones and get them from the, the legit source. Um, the worst thing you can do is follow a link to some other, to a, a Dropbox folder and download some, ex, some extension, or, you know, get it direct, you know, you can get it directly from a place like, um, I'm blanking on the name, uh, source code control on the internet. GitHub? Source for it? GitHub, GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can get stuff directly from GitHub, a lot of times they'll, the source code's there, you can review it if you have the skill. Steve, um, but Steve, <coughs> stop. <laughs> We're out of time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So we have time for one more question. That's why I want to stop. We can talk to you guys more outside. You should have just so said. this is going to be the last question, but we're going to yeah. wait outside because there's usually more questions. And um, I, need to, I will answer chat's questions later. I will, I will pop them in. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a pretty brief one. But uh, Steve had mentioned password managers earlier. And there's you know, a bunch of different kinds. Mm -hmm. Ones that encrypt it in, on your computer, ones that you sign into and two-factor it. And when choosing one, I just wanted to ask, this could be for any of you guys, but <coughs> which is generally safer? Like, encrypted in the device or stored that you can log into? Stored in the cloud, personally. Uh, because I trust their servers. They have million dollar servers. I only have an $1,000 computer. Um, and also, when you pay for those services, you are paying for the researchers and the server administrators, people like me, who take care of those things and protect those assets because their job is on the line. So, uh, yeah, it's last, actually, yeah, there's actually a lot of stuff. LastPass and 1Password are my favorites, and they have been for the last 10 years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it really comes down to ease of use as well. Um, if, you, if it's on your computer, you can't use it on your phone. Yeah. Um, you can't use it everywhere you need it. So having it in the cloud, you're offloading some risk to the provider, but chances are they're going to do a better job of it than you are. Okay. Or me, not just singling you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You look Thank like you, you can Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're done. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of the day.